inaugurations are the royal rights of America's democracy, with pomp and color, sweep and majesty. But when the moment is right and the planets align, it is the words that pass into history. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. The inaugural address, delivered moments after taking the oath, is a chance for a new leader to set the tone, to define the challenge and relaunch the ship of state. Against that daunting backdrop, how will Barack Obama stack up? Even Obama's fiercest critics acknowledge he is a gifted orator, but he's also a well-regarded writer. This memoir, Dreams from My Father, was a bestseller even before he ran for president. Usually, this kind of publishing success comes only after someone has lived here. So expectations for Obama are high, and with America beset by both war and recession, the expectations match the gravity of the moment. But the odds that Obama's speech will be long remembered are actually slim. In fact, most inaugural addresses vanish without a historical trace. The oath I have taken before you and before God is not mine alone. Even the most soaring words seldom stick. Does anyone remember Richard Nixon's lift of a driving dream or Jimmy Carter's new spirit? Uh, the number of merely plotting speeches uh, is almost countless. Historian Leo Rebuffo has made a specialty of the inaugural address, but finds few with defining moments. It doesn't really set the tone, because sooner or later, uh, you're going to find Congress disagreeing with the president, members of Congress disagreeing among themselves, because lots of people in the United States disagree among themselves. So of all the inaugural speeches, which was the best? With malice toward none, with charity for all. Lincoln's two inaugural speeches are very, very good. Lincoln was, without question, the best writer ever to be president of the United States. Without question. And the worst? Many point to William Henry Harrison's in 1841, droning on for nearly two hours in rain and cold. It certainly had the worst ending. A month later, he was dead of pneumonia. But from the founders onward, inaugural speeches have had one overarching theme, the need to unite after a fierce electoral struggle. Today we affirm a new commitment to live out our nation's promise through civility, courage, compassion, and character. Obama, without doubt, will follow that unifying tradition. I think there'll be much more hope in the speech than there will be fear. Uh, and I think uh, he will achieve the level of eloquence that he did achieve at the 2004 Democratic Convention. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. As the soaring convention speech launched Obama on the road to the White House, that could be very eloquent indeed. Mark Smith, The Associated Press, The White House.